is here. Remember, this is the question which we did last time. And we were able to, to check on the, the sensitivity of the project net present value. We did it. And uh, we were able to understand as per my assumption. Now, when you look on part C, we are being told, part C of that question, we are being told, further analysis of the company in B above suggests that the sales volume could depend on the expected economic states as follows. When you look on the poor, normal and goods, they have already provided you with the, with the probabilities. But when you look on the annual sales volume, which are provided for the poor will be 17.5 million. The normal will be remaining as per the requirement part one. When you look on the part one, we remained because they tell they told us it is expected that the 20 million units of microchips will be sold. So that one will be remaining as how we did it in the first uh, in the first phase. Nothing is going to be changing there. What we are going to be calculating here should be the NPV of the the NPV of the poor and goods because we have the NPV for the for the for the for the normal for the normal is around. So in this case, uh, in order to get this question, allow me to use this information hub there because we have been told they have they have already told us this uh, to get the expected net present value of the project using the scenario analysis. Now, that is not the case. Allow me to read the part B, where we are being told, Sunny Technology Limited is considering investing 50 million in a new machine to manufacture computer microchips, which are uh, which uh, with an expected useful life of five years and no salvage value. It is expected that 20 million units of microchips will be sold each year at three shillings per unit. The variable production costs are expected to be 1.65 per unit, while incremental fixed cost will be 10 million per annum. Now, the cost of capital is already provided there. For those who are not in class, I say it. If, for example, an examiner is giving a question, there is no tax. There is no tax. There is no tax. Don't put taxes in your computations. Don't apply taxes in your computations. That is what I said last time. Now, let me share my board here so that we can do this one. This one is not hard. So let me talk about continuation, continuation of November 2019, question number 1B. All right. So what I just want to do here, I just calculate the, the NPV for poor and good here, because for the normal, we can recall. Now, let's start by looking on the contribution. Remember, the year what is going to be changing from what we computed, it is the sales. It is the sales, which we are selling during the year. So in this case, the contribution per unit will be remaining because one microchip we are selling it at three shillings, but the variable cost is 1.65, right? Allow me to use my sales in thousands of shillings. So here we multiply by 17,500, right? 17,500. So how much am I getting here? So 3 minus 1.65, I multiply by 17,500. We are getting 23. Are we getting a good answer? How much are we getting here? 23, 625, right? Then the other one for good, we are selling how many units? We are selling 22,500. So I take 3 minus 1.65. I multiply by 22,500. 22,500, you're going to be getting 30,375, right? Then after we do that, let us list our fixed cost. For both cases, we have 10,000 shillings. So what is your earning before uh, interest and taxes? So in this case, here we have 13,625. And here we have 23,75. Are we together to that point? Those are your annual net cash flows because we don't have taxes. So this we assume is your annual net cash flows. That is your annual net cash flows. After you get this now, let us compute the NP because the examiner needs the expected. You just come here, you tell me 
Mwalimu, we are doing for the NPV for you have the NPV for all of them. So we start with the poor. We have goods. Then we have our normal. So in this case, for poor, we have gotten 13, 625. This is 20, 375. And I remember you, you can be able to recall. Sorry, you can see there is a challenge there for our network, please. Okay. Buffering. Um, there is a buffering there. Okay, so for the normal, we can be able to recall. How is our normal? We were able to get the NPU for normal uh, around 17,000, I remember. Then, remember that, Seluya, we are getting these, right? This is our annual, uh, annual cash flows. And we are receiving these for almost, I think the project's useful life is five years. Let me check. Yes, we are getting 13,625 for five years. This is annuity concept. And we had already gotten that discount factor as 3.6048. Just need to copy it. 3.6048. We subtract what? What are we subtracting here? We're subtracting our initial rate. As our previous question, we said it was 50,000. So what, whatever we are getting here is my NPV. So the first one will be 13,625 times 3.6048 minus 50,000. Getting negative 884.6. The other one will be 2375 times 3.6048. Minus 50,000. We're getting 23. 448. 23, 448. Allow me to round off. And the other one would be 17,000 times 3.6048 minus 50,000. Getting 11,282. That's how you have gotten your NPV. Exam is asking you for the expected. You just multiply with the probabilities here. Multiply the probabilities. Now remember the probabilities were 0 0.3, 0 0.1, and 0 0.6. What is our ex expected NPV? What is the expected NPV? Let me start with the last one. Uh, we are getting 6769. The other one here should be 2344. Point eight. Then the first one is negative eight eight four point six multiplied by zero point three. We are getting negative two sixty five point four. What is our total NPV expected? What is the total expected NPV there? What is our total expected NPV? Someone. And 88.4. How much? 88.48.4. How much? 88.48.4. 88.48.4. 88.48.4. You know, I could have to add a That is not hard. Uh, allow me to do the last thing of the night. The last thing, the last thing, taking 25 10, 20 minutes. I just want us to do something called certainty equivalent coefficient. It is another method. So, the certainty equivalent coefficient. 
So allow me just to summarize it. It's a very simple thing, right? You normally say, when you're dealing with the certainty equivalent coefficient, it is normally called CEC. It's normally called CEC, right? And this technique uh, normally eliminates the risk, right? You say the technique normally eliminates The technique normally eliminates uh, the risk. The risk from the cut loss. Normally eliminates the risk from the cut loss by multiplying the cut loss. By multiplying the cut loss with certainty factor. By multiplying the, uh, with the certainty factor, which we are calling the CEC, right? The certainty factor, which we are calling it the CEC. The risk free uh, cash flows are discounted using the risk free rate of return. That is a, another point which you need to get here. You say the risk free, the risk free cash flows are then. Discounted are normally discounted, normally discounted using the risk free rate of return. The risk free rate of return. So when you are computing the NPV, it doesn't have much difference, or it is of a similar. Uh, uh, for, for months, we normally take the present value of the cash inflow minus our initial day, minus the initial day. So how do we normally compute the present value of the cash inflow? The present value of the cash inflow, we normally get it by taking what? We normally take the cash flows, we multiply by the CEC, then we multiply them by the present value interest factor, I don't know where you see it here. The present value interest factor, the present value interest factor RF N years. RF N years, as you see here. This is the risk free rate of return. The risk free rate of return. Now, what are we getting here? What is the meaning of all this? Once you multiply the two we have said, you normally get something called the risk less cash flows. You're getting something called the risk less cash flows. The risk less cash flows. That is how you normally compute the aspect of this. I just want to do one question because we have only one uh for the for the period uh with the syllabus was changed so allow me to do it very quickly it doesn't have a lot of uh, uh complexities so this question was tested when let me check question was on um, august 2022 question 1a August 2022, August 2022, August 2022. That is the last thing we have to do today. Oh, we are going to be in a very good position now. August 2022, let us start here. So where the question, let me see, where are we? April, where are we? August 2022, very fast. Someone to read the question. It is already in your screen, please. Someone, please. Uh -huh. Question one. A project requires an initial investment of 50,000. It is expected to generate cash inflows of 200,000 annum for the next five years. Additional information. Uh, the firm is indifferent between 
is in difference between a certain amount of 101,347 at the end of the first year and the expected amount of 200,000. The risk free rate of return is 5% per annum required. The net present value of the project incorporating certainty equivalent coefficient to advise their management on whether the project is worthwhile. Thank you. So we are being given only two elements there, which normally uh, ascertain, which normally ascertain um, your question. So um, when you look at it, the additional number uh, number one is very crucial for your question. Why? Because that is how we normally get our CEC. That is how you get your CEC. So to get the CEC, we are going to be taking the certainty amount. We divide it by the expected cash flow. Are you for the waiver? Now, the expected what? cash flow. What a day is this? This is a very beautiful day. Situations of every situation. Yeah, to Sandy and these are very good information there. Correct. Now let us continue. Sorry for that. So in this case, we have, we have said the CC we normally take uh, the certainty amount. We divide by the expected cash flows. How much is the expected amount? Uh, the expected uh, the certainty amount is for the additional information number one. We are given one into one thousand. One into one thousand. Three hundred and forty-seven. We divide it by a cash flow of two hundred thousand. A cash flow of 200,000. So what is the discount factor you're getting? You're going to be getting 0 0.9067. And because you are dealing with different years, let us take our years, do our compounding here. So we have your one to five. What will be the discount factors for this year? The same as you call 0 0.9067, you raise power one. 0 0.9067, you raise power two. 0 0.9067 raised power 3, 0 0.9067 raised power 4, 0 0.9067 raised power 5. How much are you getting here? Now, the first one would be 0 0.9067. I write an erase here. We'll break first. 0 0.9067 raised power 2. Getting 0 0.8221. We go to year three, get it 0 0.74, 0 0.7454. We go to the last one now. Get that one. Year four now. 0 0.67, 6759. Let me go to the last one, number five. Get it 0 0.6128, 6128. 0 0.6128. Once you finish doing that, take your cash flows now. Uh, for the respective years. So the years, we're going to year one, two, three, four, and five. I take my cash flows. In this case, each year, we are generating 200,000, 200,000, 200,000 each year. 200,000, the last one will be 200,000 there. After we do all this, after you do this, you multiply now with the risk less, uh, with the CEC, sorry. So once you multiply with the CEC, you will use my part up, 0 0.9067, 0 0.8221, 0 0.7454, 0 0.6759, 0 0.6128. Whatever you're going to be getting it is normally called risk less, risk less cash flows. Risk less cash flows. I take the first one, which is 200,000, multiply by 0 0.9067, getting one into 1340. The second one will be 200,000, we multiply it with 0 0.8221, getting 164. 164 for 20, 200,000, we multiply by 0 0.7454, getting 149. 
One is 908, 200,000, we multiply by 0 0.6759, 135, 180. And the last one will be 200,000, we multiply by 0 0.6128, we are getting 122, 560. You have said once you do the riskless free cash flows, the riskless cash flow, sorry, you are going to be multiplying it with the with the um with the present value interest factor at the rate of uh, at the rate of how much at the rate of five percent that is the risk free rate of return then you're going to be getting your present value at the end so in this case the first one will be it's not to be a formula one plus one uh, one plus r we raise for negative n so the first one will be 1.05 we raise for negative one Getting 0 0.9524. We have the second one. Getting 0 0.9070. The next one is uh, 0 0.86. 0 0.8638. The other one will be a 4. Getting 0 0.82. Two seven. The last one is a one that we have five. Zero point seven. We should be three five there. Multiply with your riskless start flows. Multiply with your riskless start flows. So one one into one three forty. Multiply by zero point eight five twenty four. Here we are getting one seventy two. One seventy two seven oh eight. The other one will be 164.420. We multiply it with 0 0.9070, getting 149. 129. 0 0.8638. We multiply it with 149.080, getting 128. 175.135.180. We multiply by 0 0.8227. We are getting triple one, two thirteen. Then the last one will be one twenty two five sixty times zero point seven eight three five, getting in six thousand zero twenty six. How much it is? Plus triple one two thirteen plus one twenty eight triple seven uh, double seven five plus one forty nine one twenty nine. Plus one seventy two seven oh eight. We get six fifty seven uh, eight fifty one. Then you list your initial claim. How much is our initial claim from the question? Our initial claim is around five hundred thousand. What is your NPV here? You say my NPV is 157, 851. Advise the investor. Someone to give me the advice. What is the advice now? What? Investment is worth Sorry? What is the advice? The investment is worth since the net present value is positive. Thank you so much. You say the, the investment is worthwhile since our NPV is positive. That is a correct advice. Now, <clears throat> allow me to stop at that point. Tomorrow, tomorrow we are doing three things which are very key. We are going to be doing the division three. Uh, we are also going to be doing uh, aspects regarding to inflation, um, where we are going to be incorporating the risk and uncertainty. Um, yeah, what else are we going to be checking tomorrow? We have to be checking on the capital rationing. Yeah, we have some few questions we have uh, to factor there. And the if time will be able to allow us, we do the investment decisions under risk and uncertainty. That is what I was talking about. And also, we need to be doing the investment decisions under inflation. Uh, if, the, if we can be able to arrive uh, uh, to class on time, then those are the things that we need to discuss tomorrow. We need to discuss tomorrow. Let us stop at that point in case.
unless there is a question. 